Hi everyone, um, I'm Keisha Thompson, aka Shibi Kiki. Thanks for having me here at the Jaeger Reform stage at We Out Here Festival. Um, I'm going to share a mixture of songs and poems. A lot of them are from a new project called Ephemera, which is coming out next week. So um, let me know what you think. Drop me a comment, but be kind. <laughs> this first track is called Yakota. It's the opening track of the album and it's a Swedish word. And it means that moment in the morning where it's really early and the birds start singing. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to pretend that I can hear you all clapping from your rooms. Um, yeah, so that piece was the opening track from Ephemera. That's the new album that I've got coming out. And I had the pleasure of working with Tom Lear, who some of you might know as Worker, on the whole project. And we started with poems and ideas and my loop pedal and then tried to figure out what they would all sound like as songs. So um, the next piece that I'm gonna perform for you is the single from the project, and it's called Curse of the Eye.
caught you breath for ransom. What is it worth? A funny high, a chance, a cloudy day, your dearest love. I never said that I knew you were capable of love, but I dreamt a warning. Where I come from, women at the table, sniff vials and get put out. Reveal everything with pride, then die into a thousand pieces. The venom of love, poor and perfect. Prisoners to needs, attempts, blubbers, surpassing beauty. Bless me for destroying him after he found my faithfulness. I pushed my wishes down a hill after him, panicking, headed into the swamp, lost for doubt. Quiet never kisses, nonsense. I am a summer of screams, smothered adventure, singed memory, revenge marauding, surprise quirks fighting, rich from inherited fear, I retire. Lightning has succeeded our future. Unusual light surrenders and captures us in despair. And I swear, I cannot save you. Lies do not become us. Thank you. Okay. So, um, I'm going to do an a cappella piece now because uh, just to showcase that I do poetry and uh, songs. <laughs> and uh, Sam from Reform requested this one. I wasn't going to do it. I was like, okay, cool, all right, um, I'll do this one. And um, 
Yeah, it's a piece that I wrote during lockdown. I have managed to write a little bit. Um, yeah, so I've not really learned it because I've only done it once, had to do it for another gig and I don't really want to learn it. It's a bit, I feel like it just speaks for lockdown. Um, but there's a line in there. I'm just going to give a disclaimer because I talk about the UEFA Cup because when I wrote it, it was cancelled. But it's happening now. But whatever, I'm not changing it. I'm not changing the poem. Anyway, this poem is called Numbers. I know you're not going to believe me, but I've been thinking. And I've got it all sussed. The reason for all this blood clot chaos. The reason for all these global blunders. I don't know about you, but I'm blaming it on the numbers. Now, before you go casting doubt, I need you to at least hear me out. You can't disagree if you don't know what I'm on about. The first time I heard the truth, it sounded extreme. But think about any problem. And there's a number in between. I mean, look at all those sequels. Shrek 3, Fast and the Furious 6. Things are usually fine until a number gets caught up in the mix and I know I'm onto something. I've got our problems fixed. The reason for all these global blunders. I don't know about you, but I'm blaming it on the numbers. Think back to school. All that maths that you had to fight, shouting out, when am I going to use this in life? And that's what they wanted us to think, right? They wanted us to feel like we couldn't understand. See, now I find that it's part of one big plan. I called up my friend the other day to share the news. He said lockdown's got me sounding confused, either that or I was pulling his leg, but this isn't a ruse. The first time I heard the truth, it sounded extreme. But think about any problem and there's a number in between. I said, look, everyone's talking about this COVID. No one's checking on that 19. I've got no problem with the G, but it's the five that's troubling me. He said he'd heard enough and he'll call me next week. I said, good luck with that, mate, because I'm giving up this number. I'm unshackling myself from the confines of numerical conundra. I said, catch me on Instagram. That's where I'm going to be living, through the medium of pure video and pure image. Then he mentioned all them zeros and ones, all that coding. So I guess now I'm off the grid. And I asked him, well, does that mean that I need to give up my vital statistics? Because things are usually fine until a number gets caught up in the mix and that's when he put down the phone. But I'm going to keep my phone, I'm just giving up the number. Got a lot of music on there. It's got a decent camera. I don't need to use the pin to unlock it, I just use my finger. Trust me, I'm unshackling myself from the confines of numerical conundra and I know you lot are laughing now. But we need to act first. Because sooner or later those numbers, they're going to turn on us. Think about next year. It's only going to get worse. 50 years of Glasto, 60 years of Eurovision and the UEFA Cup. All of our beloved anniversaries, they're not going to add up. Just yesterday, I did a simple equation and it was giving me stress. I was looking at the number of people who voted to save the NHS. Now that should match the amount who were clapping on Thursday nights. But I was crunching and crunching them numbers and something just wasn't coming out right. So clearly there's a flaw. I can't deal with these figures anymore. Like, ethnic minority's chance of dying from COVID is four times more, or eight minutes plus one knee plus one neck equals third degree murder. Is it any wonder that I'm up to here with all this numerical murmur? I don't want to be part of a system that makes me feel like a statistic. Daily updates trying to convince us that we can carry the one on a pandemic churning out numbers to cover up missed targets and false facts so I can distract myself by putting up trivial comments and then seeing how many likes it will attract. Now that's the polyrhythmic sound of hypocrisy. This collective isolation is having a negative impact on me and trauma isn't something that you can subtract. So I say it's time to act. It's time for a numbers boycott. Burn your calendars. Leave your calculators to rot, cut your tape measure, dash where your abacus, the whole lot, just stop counting. Lord knows I've stopped counting the days. Let's give up on numbers, step into a new age, it will solve all our problems, including climate change. You take numbers out of the situation, the global temperature, it can't go up or down. It can't be part of a recession if there's no value attached to the pound. 
scrap the exchange rate, the inflation, all the emergency data of devastation, it just goes away. And how I wish it could be that simple. To pin all my problems on something that is voiceless and abstract. Anyone who knows me knows that writing that poem would have been a chore because I actually love numbers to my very core. But I'm happy to attack them in the name of irony. In the name of you questioning my sanity. If it means that it at least makes you take pause and briefly think about the things that you choose to blame when you see a system flawed. Thank you. Okay, so this next piece that I'm going to do is called Count. And um, I'm really grateful in that, as a part of the project Ephemera, I got to work with Abel Seliku, and he's a cello player and a singer, and he's just, yeah, an amazing musician, and he's just stunning. And um, I got to see him at the Royal Northern College of Music, and I just thought, yeah, I need that. I need his voice and everything on my track. Um, so, yeah, thanks, Abel, for joining me on my project. Um, so this piece is called Count, and um, it's about the Nigerian girls who were kidnapped um, quite a few years ago now. Uh, yeah, when I heard the news, I just felt like I had to write something in response to that, so this is it. Count two, three, four. Before you tell me it's the 21st century, I beg you to count until you get to 234. Count in Hossa, in Ibu, in Yoruba, in Fulani. This English girl doesn't know. Count their names as quickly as they fled from them as they were herded into the trucks with the livestock and the food, enlightened by fear. Count 234 slate diamonds, tawny backs, meanie mouths, 234 articles on terrorism. A father faints and a mother holds her tongue like an altar. Money slips between hands like oil the unspoken prophet of patriarchy? Or is it patriotism? Obama is counting on securing his place before China steps in, and it has taken two weeks for this news to germinate, to get to me. Where was Alex Crawford in all of this? Was it Pistorius she was reporting on, or was it Peaches and a Russian model post a topless picture, bring back our girls across her shallow chest whilst a Yorkshire woman tells Jeremy Vine that we should just give him the money? Because immediately, an African issue means charity. American reporter jokes, bring back our country as a member of UKIP reduces it to black on black crime over Roy Bosch tea and a Twitter feed. Are you still counting? I've finished and started again. Searching for the algorithm of powerlessness, distracted by the fractal patterns of social diffusion. Someone get Chomsky on the phone. Or Desmond Tutu, they'll know what to do. Or should we speak to Diane Abbott? I don't know. Maybe we should just listen to what some black woman thinks about all of this. But in the meantime, let's zoom in on those ovulating tonsils and the dance in their despair. I wonder if in 234 days we'll indulge this family again as though their last name was McCann. Forgive me 
for forsaking the power of symbolism when pragmatics are out of reach. Could I stand here, red top, placard and sing, bring them back, bring them back, bring them back, bring them back, bring them back. Hoping that somehow one of those girls will hear me. Bring them back. Bring them back. Bring them back. Okay. Um, I always need a bit of a. Whew after that piece, because um, it makes me a bit sad, and it should do. Uh, Okie dokie. So, the next piece that I'm going to do is called Descending. And again, it's a piece that has been inspired by a poem, and I then tried to figure out and just pull little lines from it and turn it into a song. Um, the last two tracks that I'm going to do as a part of this set are loop pedal based because that's how I work before I then start to collaborate with someone. I just sit in my room and just kind of like figure it out, whatever. So I thought as an ode to that process, I'll share two of those tracks with you that kind of come from that world. So this piece is called Descending.
Drop me comments. I want to know what you think. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks again to Reform and Jaeger and We Are Here Fest for having me. It's really lovely to like share this piece. Um, it's a premiere because yeah, this is the first time that I'm like sharing the material. So I'm really like yeah up for hearing what you think and it'll be out next week it's called ephemera i'm keisha thompson aka shibi kiki and this is the final track um that i'm gonna do in this set again it's a loop pedal performance piece song i don't know what i'm talking about anymore um and it's called solipsism and it's about like what is it about it's about all the nonsense that gets said to you when you're dating and you just gotta deflect it and be like you know what i'm just gonna do me I'm just gonna be on my own uh yeah so enjoy Got a lot to do, a lot on my mind. I'm 
me dawn um so yeah i'm keish thompson aka she be kiki and um most of that material was from my new album ephemera which is coming out next week on the 28th of august um so yeah go and check it out um follow me on all the things i'm on instagram and twitter and all that stuff uh, but yeah thanks again to um we Out Here Festival at the Reform Jaeger stage and please do enjoy the rest of the festival. <laughs> 